questions 95 to 98 in the ASERT green paper. Question 95. The major product is most likely to be. So the major product is going to be the product which has the least substitution. Now substitution refers to the number of non-hydrogen bonds to this double bond. So for example, if we have uh, this, well, we have one non-hydrogen bond to the double bond, so this is called mono-substituted. So in 95, we've got these three structures, and we've got to figure out the level of substitution of all of them. So for structure two, we have two non-hydrogen bonds, so therefore it is di-substituted. Structure three has three uh, non-hydrogen bonds, so it is tri-substituted. And finally, structure four also has three. So as according to the stem, the least substituted molecule is going to be the major product. So therefore, structure two will be the major product, and therefore, A is the correct answer. Question 96. So there's one major difference between butene and ethene, and that's that whilst butene has isomeric forms, ethene does not. So when we have this sort of situation where we've got butene as our product, we can clearly see that the double bond can be in either the one position or the two position. So, but for ethene, um, that's not possible because that double bond can't go anywhere else. It can't um, because there's only two carbons. So therefore, when we have a product of um, hydroxyethylene, we would expect only one structural form because there is no other possible um, isomeric form. So therefore, B is the correct answer for question 96. Question 97. So essentially in this whole process, what we've got is an elimination reaction. When we go from this quaternary ammonium molecule to the alkene, what's happening is we're losing, uh, we have two leaving groups. So um, we're losing the uh, NCH3 uh, group and we're also losing a hydrogen, but in the process we're gaining a double bond. So for example, uh, just to sort of visualize this, we're losing this hydrogen and um, this whole group is also leaving. And in the process, we're forming a double bond in between um, the, the two molecules, sorry, the two carbons that lost those uh, two atoms slash groups. So what we get is um, after we've removed these two groups and formed this double bond, what we get is this, which if you sort of um, rearrange it so that uh, just to make it look like it's being presented in question 97, what you get is this. So now that you know the whole process of forming these alkenes from these quaternary ammonium ions via elimination reaction, hopefully you should be able to just go through each of the quaternary ammonium ions in uh, A, B, C, and D, add those double bonds, take away those um, those uh, the appropriate leaving groups, and therefore um, hopefully come to the correct conclusion. Um, and that is that C will end up leading to the alkene that's been given to us in question 97. In question 98, we're given piperidine and it's converted into an uh, quaternary ammonium salt. So we essentially add these two R groups to the nitrogen. And basically what happens is um, we treat it with excess of a strong base, heat, etc. So we're going through that same process as before where we're conveying the quaternary ammonium ion into the alkene. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through that elimination step where we um, lose one bond with the nitrogen and we lose a, uh, the hydrogen and form a double bond in the process. So 
what's going to happen is um, firstly a hydrogen will leave will form uh, a double bond here and we're also going to lose one bond with this nitrogen um, so overall the structure that we're going to get is going to look something along the lines of this So this doesn't resemble any of the answers A, B, C. So therefore D is the correct answer for question 98.